guys, today the topic is rediscovered products. I love shopping my stash. I like digging through my drawers and finding things that have been neglected and trying to bring them back into the rotation because this happens if you have a big makeup collection. It's really easy to get caught up in the new products, this new palette, that new palette, and then you look at the things you already have and you're like, why have I not been using this? So I'm going to start using it before it's too late. And I'm really enjoying this little floral headband. This was sent uh, by by Tarte in with some brushes. So I don't know, it just makes me happy. It makes me smile to have this on. So I've got quite a few things sitting in front of me here. Also, I was tagged in Kristen Game's uh, favorite shadows for a one shadow look video. And I thought I might combine those in this because I really haven't been using enough of my shadow singles lately. I've been in full on palette mode with a lot of new palettes. So I thought I would pull some out that I want to be using more and mention those. So things I've kind of shot my stash for there. But to start off, I want to mention this Ben Nye Cameo Luxury Powder. Now, Ben Nye is really the original behind the banana powder that has really found its way into a lot of contouring palettes, but they made the original like Ben Nye yellowish toned loose powder in containers like this. And when that was really hot, I got that. I also got a couple of other shades, including Cameo. And I forgot how much I enjoyed using this as an under eye setting powder. And yeah, I've got like a ton of it here. How much is this? This is like a three ounce container of it. What I like about this is that it's a very, very similar tone to Bare Minerals Well Rested, which I find to be a really brightening topper for any sort of under eye concealer, especially if it's a concealer that stays a little dewy, tacky, or really needs to be set. Um, I've liked using that product on top. The one flaw of that product is that I think you can easily use a little too much at times if you're not really careful. And as the day goes on, that can look a little bit heavy in that area. This, however, maintains that tone and brightening effect, not with shimmer, but just by the tone of the powder. Um, and it's very, very lightweight. So I've been enjoying this a whole bunch lately. I'm really glad I pulled it out again. The way I use it, I just kind of give it a little shake before I open it up. And then there's usually just, you may not even be able to see it there, but there's a little bit in the cap. And I just pick that up with the brush that I usually use in that area. This is my Smashbox number 10. Any kind of fluffy um, crease brush. Real Techniques has a brush actually called the Setting Brush. That would be a really nice size for this area. I like using something that's got a little fluff to it though. Not so much a flat concealer brush because I think those can... Um, carry a little more product and pack on a bit more than I want. And these brushes can be a little more wispy and just give you that light application. Another product that's more of a brightener than a concealer that I've been using more is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Brush On Glow BB Highlight. And I have it in soft pink. And I do have a full review on this that I did, uh, I believe it was last summer on the Express channel. And this is one of those twist up products, you know, kind of a pin style highlight. It does have a little bit of a pinky tone and you would sheer it out and it gives you kind of a highlighted look right up in here. And I am wearing this today and I'm finding um, I'm liking it a whole lot better now that I'm not dealing with my melasma issue because there what I was needing to do was really pay attention to concealing and then to go on top of that with any kind of liquid consistency highlight would sometimes take away some of my concealer coverage that I had built up, if that makes sense. So now that I'm not really doing all that heavy duty concealing in that area or coverage with foundation or whatever it may be, um, I feel like I can get a little more good out of these liquidy brighteners. So this was one that, you know, I spent some money on it. I do want to be using it. And so I pulled that out uh, back into my rotation again. Another thing that I have rediscovered, absolutely loved this and I'm kicking myself for ever having kind of forgotten about it, but it's the Milani Brow and Eye Highlighter. This is the one in matte cream and luminous lift. So it's a double-ended pencil. And one, just as I said, is, gosh, did I just spit all over that? <laughs> this one is a uh, creamy, a little bit, um, I would say pinky toned pencil. And then this one has a little bit of glow to it. And it's so great. Used right up here under the brow. It gives a really clean look there. You could draw this all over the lid. It becomes a nude base. The other day, I actually tried it in my lower inner rim. It didn't last quite as well as my almond cream pencil, but I mean, it did give me some at least 
least temporary brightness in that area, so I just love that. A rediscovered eye brush that I've been wanting to use a lot more here over, you know, the past several weeks has been my pencil brush from Sigma, and if you're kind of thinking about what you already own, it wouldn't have to be this brush, but maybe you have a pencil brush from another brand. But in the context of my collection, this has a little more fullness than the E21 smudge brush that I reach for quite often, which I still love that brush, but this is just really great for getting a very, very smoky look on the lower lash line. So today, for example, I worked in a deeper shade with the smudge brush, um, going in more toward the liner, but then everything that's kind of the bulk of the color that's right there on the lower lash line, I used with this. Hi, He's being very sweet. Are you being very sweet and smiley? What are all the lights and all the things? Oh. Bye. See you later. See ya. Well, this is how it goes, folks. This is real life, so I'm gonna have my little companion sitting down here. She might even chime in and tell you a few of her thoughts as well. I'm gonna just jump in and mention a few blushes. One of them that really prompted the whole idea for this video for me is Benefits Dallas. This was mentioned in my understated blushes video. Blush products that don't seem to be all that great at a glance, but I tell you what, I love this shade, and I really like using it a little lower on the cheek. I'm wearing it right here today. And I just think it's so beautiful. It's kind of that pretty dusty plum color, but I elaborated quite a bit on that in my uh, other video. Also, a highlight type product that I really haven't been getting nearly enough use out of, and I am wearing this today, it's my Cindy Luminizer. I've been using my Mary Luminizer more here and there, but this is the one that actually has more of a peachy tone to it. So kind of a, I don't know, it makes me think a little bit of a rose goldness to that. Are you gonna hold that down there? <laughs> but it's really beautiful beautiful. It's just like a pretty, I don't know, blush topper type product because the amount of color that's in this, it does kind of accentuate or bring out more of a peachiness in a lot of the blushes I use with it. And here's another really unique product that I hardly used at all that I have been getting a lot of use out of. It's my Smashbox O-Glow. I don't even know when I got this, but this is a product that um, it squeezes out of the tube clear and it kind of has the texture of Smashbox Photo Finish Primer but do you see any of the pink coming out of that? But I really notice it on my cheeks as I rub it into the apples of my cheeks. First off, it rubs in very easily with fingers. Rediscovered palette. This is the palette of spring. I love this so much. My romantic eye palette. It's gorgeous, you guys. Um, I've raved about this in past years. It's just so beautiful for those few pops of color, you know? If you are not a big color person, but you just need something that's gonna get you into it a little bit. That gorgeous pistachio color at the bottom. There's some pretty plums and purpley shades. Today I am wearing this. I've got that shade called Honeymoon. That's the green on the lid. A little bit of this um, shade called Ever After that's right beside it. That's kind of worked up into my crease and slightly above. I don't get much use out of that shade in this palette normally, but it's great. And then I've got Cut the Cake and First Dance. Those are those two plummy shades, or one's a lilac, one's a plum, down on on the lower lash line. So you got a nice balance of matte and shimmer in here. The quality is some of Too Faced's best quality, I think, in this palette. So I'm glad I pulled that out again because it really makes me think spring. And then single shadows. These are things that I am setting out for myself as products that I want to use more of. And several of these, these first few that I'm gonna mention are great for the one shadow looks like Kristen was talking about in her tag. And one is the Elf Pressed Mineral Shadow, and this is called Wine Tour. Look at this unique shade. It's a dusty lavender shade with a golden shimmer in it. It's really, really pretty, and I love the texture of these pressed mineral shadows. I was wearing this as a one shadow look the other day all over the lid, blended up into the crease just a bit, and then also smoked out with that pencil brush that I mentioned on the lower lash line. Really pretty, a very subtle way to wear purple. I love that shade. Majorly rediscovered beauty right here. This is the Infallible Single from L'Oreal and Bronze taupe. This is so, so perfect for all over the lid and into the crease. I'm about positive I mentioned this the first time I did a one shadow looks type of video. Great for those of you who don't want to even think about like, okay, what color am I going to put on my eyes and will that work with my lip color and blonde?
blah, blah, blah. This will work with anything. It's really neutral, but has a really pretty sheen on the lids that kind of makes you think you did a little bit more work than you actually did do, if that makes sense. And on the topic of L'Oreal Infallible, did you know, as I was at Sally Beauty Supply, I saw that Femme Couture is making a very similar style eyeshadow for a little less per shadow. I'll have to double check, but I think these were like a couple dollars less than what a L'Oreal Infallible single costs. And I have one in Pyrite. This is kind of like a taupe with a little bit of purple in it. Very unique type color. Really like it. And then I got Emerald, a really pretty green. Um, it's more of like a teal type color than a really true, true green, but I enjoy it. But those are not so much rediscovered as like a recent find I really want to be getting some use out of. And then a couple of other singles that I think you might find are just great accessories to an overall look, not necessarily a one shadow look. The one shadow shades, the things I think work best in that way are kind of mid-tone shadows that aren't too light, aren't too dark, and have just a hint of shimmer or sheen to them because then they recede into the crease and look deeper but look brighter on the lid. That's the whole concept behind one shadow looks for me anyway. But a rediscovered single that I love is this Sally Girl single in Champagne. This has a beautiful sheen to it. Um, could make a nice even cheek highlight. It's very pigmented. You might think, what? That little 99 cent shadow? What good's that gonna be? It's really, really nice, I must say. And then hold the phones. I've got a cargo shadow. I got this off of Hot Look. Did not use it nearly enough. Is this the darkest brown? The darkest, richest brown ever? It's called Columbia. I'm thinking a crease shade. I'm thinking a liner shade. I, why am I not using this? This is rich and so, so dark. How we doing down there, cutie? Rediscovered Lips, number one. Oh, I'm glad you're here for this one. Um, this is actually uh, Fig from Bite. This is what I've been wearing in this video. And this reminds me of like, I don't know, fresh, beautiful baby lips. Kind of reminds me of her pretty lips here. Like, look at her lips and the beautiful, like, just natural kind of pinkness they have there. That's what this makes me think of because there's not a lot of excessive shine when you put this on your lips. It doesn't have shimmer or anything. It just gives that look of, like, the lips you had when you were younger, you know? So that is Bite Fig. I have it here in a duo. The full size would look a little different from that. Now, if you're into the cool-toned pinky nudes, I had this on in um, a recent video. This is my matte lip color from e.l.f. in T-Rose. Got so many questions and compliments on this shade, and these are like twist up, kind of skinny sticks. They remind me a little bit of the ColourPop um, lippies, but weren't alone. This has that nice matte finish. I don't think it's too drying, but sometimes just for effect, I like to put a little bit of a gloss on top. Speaking of something that's kind of like a hybrid gloss slash balm, I mean, these give my lips shine, but I think they're very, very comfortable on the lips and they're colorless as well. Do you want to grab those? Do those look like fun? Um, these are from C.O. Bigelow. I got them from Bath and Body Works and one is the Lemon and Pomegranate Lip Cream. Smells so good. Like this is aromatherapy in a tube for sure. I mentioned this on Instagram. I just love that. And then also loving the Cinnamon Supreme 2X. I don't know. It just brings a totally different like scent experience to your mind when you're wearing this. And it says twice the moisturizers, twice the breath fresheners. So that's a really cool one. And then a color that I'm really wanting to wear more of as we get into spring and summer are those reds that have kind of like that teeny, teeny bit of an orangey twist to them. And one that's really cool, that's a little more on the sheer side, I think it's very wearable, is um, this one from Revlon. It's the shine formula of their super lustrous lipstick. And this shade is called Rich Girl Red. I was wearing this just around the house the other day. Really, really liked the way it looked. I think at first I may have been a little bit critical of this formula because I was like, oh, it's not as full color as a regular um, super lustrous lipstick is. But now for whatever reason, I'm kind of appreciating it a little more, just liking this for the color. And I actually think the sheerness makes it seem kind of, you know, low effort, low maintenance. Seems a little less fussy on the lips, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But that is all I've got for you, which it seems like a lot for this rediscovered favorites type video. Um, it's really fun to shop your stash. It's the cheapest way to shop, I tell you, to look through the things you already have and just picking out some products that have been underused that need a little more love. Ooh, 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 ooh. So thanks for joining. We'll see you again next time. Bye guys. <laughs>